Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful little seascape, maybe something that kind of feels like summer with beautiful turquoise colors, something tropical. It should be fun, and if you're enjoying this and you're looking forward to seeing it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with a little blue, <laughs> right over my blue. I went ahead and tinted my canvas like I usually do when I paint acrylic, and what better color to tint it than blue, because I'm going to be using so much of it today. So... Anyway, there you go. That's the reasoning. If a little bit of it shows through, well, that's no big deal. I've got a little bit of foundation medium in a cup down there that I'm dipping into, and I've also got my handy little Mr. Bottle, which I should have already, but I didn't. I kind of missed my background, which is, of course, totally dry. And that way I can blend just a little better. I'm using a 16 by 20, not my favorite size in the world, but it's all I had. <laughs> I need to get to the store. There, that looks pretty good. I recommend, uh, well, at least I, I enjoy painting. I don't know that I really recommend it. I enjoy painting on um, the 14 by 18 size. It's kind of a wacky little size, but it films really well, so I enjoy it. Now we are gonna do a seascape, but because this is acrylic, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint a little further down and uh, probably end up just masking off my horizon. Now I'm misting the bottom, being careful not to miss the top because the sky is still drying. I'm waiting for it. I just, uh, I didn't wanna sit here too long. So anyway, I'm gonna do the water while I'm waiting for the sky to dry and I may end up just putting a little masking tape up there and then doing the horizon later. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> We're gonna have a, a, a nice light turquoisey blue ocean color right here. Not overly mixed together, you know, not mixed to where it's totally dead. There are slight variations. Oh, I gotta squeeze out a little more foundation medium. That's okay. That is beautiful. See that color right there? Doesn't make you wanna go on a vacation. Pretty nice. <laughs> Grab some some darker blue, maybe. Oh, that. Come on now. <laughs> darker blue. There. I think I might have accidentally hit a little black or something. There we go. Work that right up to right up to the horizon, sorta. So my horizon's going to be up maybe an inch, inch and a half higher than that. Good. Let me dip into a little. A little more of the medium, see how it makes it flow. Great. And then of course, as we go down, I'll lighten it back up again with a little more white, which I am going through a lot today. I can go right down here, kind of do the same. That looks good, so there's a, a gradual, I can't speak, a gradual transition. The next thing we can actually do here real quick is just take a little bit of our yellow ochre light a little of our umber and white. There we go. Something, ooh, <laughs> something like that. Maybe a little red. That will overcome the blue in my brush that I didn't bother to wipe out or wash out. This is acrylic, so you can just rinse your brush in water. Super easy cleanup. I think that's probably people's favorite thing about acrylics. It's certainly a nice point about them. Okay, so I got me a little bit of a sand color, kind of an underpainting for the sand. This isn't the color that we're gonna go with for the whole thing, but just a little underpainting to get started with it. Right here, I'm doing this while this is wet. So I only have about a few minutes, depending on the humidity. And this is kind of a kind of a humid day. I guess I got an extra minute. Of course, the air conditioner takes some, most of that out. But there you go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and throw in a couple of, of little islands. Well, actually not necessarily islands. They're probably connected to this land here. But that's nice right there. We'll put them in uh, fairly dark at the top compared to what they're gonna be at the bottom. So they're nice and light and you get a little bit of, of depth going on. It's pretty cool. Very good, very good. Little, we're gonna lose a little of the bottom when we go to paint in the rest of the ocean, but that's okay. No big deal. Maybe just make it a little taller in anticipation for that. Yep, I like it. I like it right there. The sky is is not dry, so I'm being careful. If you scrub through this, you'll actually lift away right back in uh, to the next dry layer, which would have been the blue, which is totally fine, actually, because of what we're painting. It, it totally goes with it, so no worries. I like that right there. I like that. So there is kind of a mountain one. Wow, actually, if we keep if we keep going like this, we won't need a we won't need much of a horizon. <laughs> That's cool. All right, maybe a little umber. 
just a little umber. And I'm, I'm constantly misting my palette so it doesn't dry out. Let's get us in the next island, kind of a little darker in color, a little green. All right, just like that. And then we'll get a little darker and darker. I don't know that we want like a million layers in here, you know, three or four good layers and, and call it, call it finished. I'm going to go bigger, like right up here, that much bigger. Good. Okay, there you go. Three good layers. You get a lot of depth pretty quick. And from this, we'll pull out little, um, little trees and bushes and stuff. I'm going to purposely fuzzy up the, oh, that's, oh, good, that's dry. Purposely fuzzy up the edges. Nice. Now our sky is is really fully dry and that's important. I'm gonna take my little custom tapered round. I'm gonna do a few quick clouds. It's pretty funny how, uh, unless you wanna like hit it with a hairdryer or go take a break for a few minutes, you pretty much have to wait and do some of the rest of the painting and come back and do your clouds. There, now if you had something, if you had some important reason why you don't wanna do it in that order, you would obviously need to just wait for it to dry. But some of the times, and today being one of those times, you can pretty much just do the clouds whenever. I mean, just do them before a big palm tree goes in or something like that, you know? Other than that, you're fine. Won't hurt a thing. You know me, I love doing stuff out of order. I think it's just to drive people nuts. <laughs> kind of break the rules a little bit. That looks decent. All right, maybe get a little more color. I did tint this with just a little tiniest bit of red. I thought that was kind of nice. And a little yellow too, something you don't always get away with when you paint oils. I'll put a little yellow in the clouds on top of a blue. That's kind of risky. Eh, in acrylics, it's not so much. And that is why I did it. Nice, it's a decent little cloud. So you can just make your clouds bigger. Of course, we have, we have uh, palm trees and this isn't really the, the main feature anyway the clouds aren't so we've got a lot of other stuff going on I think what I was where I was going with that so so I'm not gonna go crazy with just kind of getting getting some of it in I love this brush this is my go-to cloud brush for acrylics and right now I'm dry brush blending that's the that's the name of this technique and it's the way that you can get feathered edges without being on a time constraint it looks just like it looks just like you're painting this as, as if it was wet, but you're not. And honestly, I think that may be that may be enough cloud right there for us. I, I like it. I really do. I think it's warm. I think it's pretty and it's simple. And I think that for us today, that's great. That's exactly what we want. Maybe just crisp up an edge here and there. Here or there. Here and there. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days already. Oh, there, that looks good. Now I went ahead and placed just a little masking tape right here on my horizon line. The ocean's not quite dry, as you can see when I move my finger across it, the top layer's still not quite dry, but I put it on gently, so. As you can see, I kind of just got tired of waiting. <laughs> there. I'm gonna just paint in my sky like that, and watch this, it's just super, super easy. Ha, <laughs> perfect, perfect little line. Yeah, you can't beat that. All right, that looks decent. Now we'll pretty much just let that area dry. We won't mess with it. Added a couple of more clouds, so that's cool. Kind of like them. Maybe just put some highlight on. They're a little tacky. We shouldn't do it, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> I'm too excited to get down to that ocean. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of our, I don't know, blues and some yellows and greens and just anything that we feel like grabbing. And we're gonna just put a touch of what feels like a little highlight out on some of these uh, some of these little trees and bushes just by dab dabbling or, or just touching with the brush like this the lights coming across kind of like that it's pretty the sun's pretty much up today like that so you know not not any super strong shadows but it, it'll be pretty good there we go that looks decent I don't really need a ton I think more of this that's in shadow the better just big big uh, blocky shapes would actually be nice. It will contrast well. Because the sky is very pale and very light. So, you know, you get that effect. That'll look really good. So, just change your color each time you reload. Sometimes, you know, it's more of the yellow ochres. Sometimes it's a lot more of the vivid greens. It just doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're getting something different. 
then we're going to be happy. There's some of our sap green out there. Vivid sap green, actually, is one I use, and I like it. Acrylics tend to be kind of dull if you're not real careful. So what I did was, so that we didn't have to be so careful, was I punched up the colors quite a bit. So that you'll notice that these colors are more vivid than normal. And I, I think that it helps me personally. So hopefully it helps you guys too. And if you haven't checked out the acrylic paints and brushes, you can find them on the website. Just really everything that I use as far as that's concerned is there. And you can go get it and, and be painting along with me. It's fun. <laughs> and then send me pictures that you do. It's always fun to see that. Now I've got my little micro filbert out going here and I am going to kind of paint in, well, I am painting in, <laughs> these little water line thingies. I'm just going to do it quickly and randomly. That seems to be like the easiest way I think to paint an, uh, a tropical ocean in acrylics. It's actually easier in acrylics I think because of the layering process with the dry paints in, in a minute. You'll see. But anyway, we'll put, because what you do is you put this kind of an underpainting thing down first, and then what you can do is you can highlight it and add to it more once it's dry and you don't have to worry about bad things happening. <laughs> there. Oh, you can get crazy. I don't think you, I don't think you want too, too much of this, and you definitely want it, well, actually you do want, you want a lot of it, but you do want it to get smaller as you go back. And so that's what we'll concentrate on here. Less paint, less pressure, smaller strokes. Not so crazy back there. Yeah, looks decent though. Maybe a little crazier up in here. Even a little more movement than I'm doing. See, I think I'm, I'm a little like too tight. I think I need to loosen up a little. Just get some there. Wacky, wacky things. I actually think that looks better. There. Now I'm highlighting these little waves and I'm simply just kind of picking them out from the dark areas and, and adding that little bit of light which just pops them straight out. It takes a few coats of paint because I'm glazing it. There's my weight right there. I'm glazing it. So you put it on bright like that, which I've already done a couple of times. And then because there's so little pigment, when it dries, it kind of fades away. So you do it a couple of times to build it up. This is way better than, you know, I'm, I'm sure somebody's asking me, well, you know, why not just glop it on thick then if, if, you know, that's the problem. Well, this is so much easier to get these soft feather blends if you have just a glaze. And it only takes an extra couple seconds to, you know, to, to do it again. It's good practice anyways. So there you go. Hmm, nice. I'm going to try to leave this area kind of transparent over here. So you'll notice we have a lot of transparent glazes. Now I'm taking just a minute to, to kind of brighten up our foreground. I put just a little highlight on some trees up there. And now I'm going to kind of work on the sand. Nice. And so I played around for a couple of minutes on the water and decided, well, I better stop and get my sand in, you know, the highlights on the sand so that I can put the water over the sand instead of the other way around. It would look kind of funny with the sands floating on top of the water. So I'm getting it in now. Of course, a little bit of this will be eaten away by the, by the water. You know, I mean, literally we'll cover it and make it smaller. So it's just like a, like a pond or something in a landscape painting. You make it just a touch bigger than you want because it shrinks back. Now I'm just finishing up kind of absorbing a few little dots here with the paper towel. Actually looks like I lifted through that wet paint. So you can actually just glop a little more of that right back on. Good. That looks that looks about just about right. See what we did there? We just um, speckled some paint on. You guys know how to do that. You just flick it right on with the brush, and then. But the important part is that you kind of take a paper towel or a dry brush or something and just smooth it out, so it looks like little seashells and sand and stuff like that. All right. So now I've got some water, and I've got a nice light blue that I've mixed up. There, that looks pretty good wipe out most of the paint from the brush and I've got to get back to this water area. Oops, too much paint or yeah, way too much paint. <laughs> there. Now I'm going to just glaze on, you know, I think there wasn't enough water. I think it evaporated while I was standing there talking to you. There. Now that's just right. See We're going to use a, a dry brush glaze right over all of this, mostly in the, in the shadow zones. That looks pretty, pretty good. You can float a little, is that dry? No, though these little dots are still wet for the most part. So we need to kind of be careful. But we get a little of that glaze right over. This should be dry back there. So get a little of that right over this ocean. Always constantly dipping into the water. It evaporates so quick. Of course, you could use the uh, 
the foundation medium, but it's thicker than, than water. It's quite a bit thicker. So you won't get such a transparent wash from it. So for this particular application, we're going to use the water instead. Nice. All right. Maybe just continue to work kind of placing in these little, these little shadows. See that? Covering up a lot of those squigglies that we did because they were pretty quick and erratic. So this covers up most of them. You see why we weren't too concerned with them. Nice. You can use this opportunity to, to make extra little tiny waves just by doing this. And you can highlight them separately if you want to, if they even need it. Cool. Now, acrylics really do get a, they get a reputation for not being, um, not being easy to change or not being very forgiving. You all have heard that, but look, these, these uh, palm trees are dry. I can take my little, my little round brush and literally glaze over with just white and, and blue. It's just whatever that was. I think is what I grabbed, but mostly, mostly water is what this actually is. And I'm just literally glazing it to lighten just a few of these right here. Now, I know what you're thinking, why am I doing this? Well, no, you probably saw the thumbnail of the video. You know exactly why I'm doing this. I'm probably thinking, why am I doing this? Uh, yeah, we should probably stop. All right, and now I can take my, uh, now I can take my brush here. This is the little synthetic flat. We'll pull it to a nice chiseled edge. Get just a little bit of our medium going. Yes, all right, now, I'm thinking right about here, we need that large, large palm tree that comes right in. This is the one we can sit under so you don't get a sunburn. <laughs> nice. That looks good, isn't it? All right, we'll play around with this. You guys have seen palm trees quite a lot, you know, just about every time we do an ocean, we do a palm tree. I love them though, and I think they, they're gonna add an extra special, um, just feeling of, of tropical ocean waves and tropical setting in this painting today. So that's why we're doing it. But look, if you were just have that black, like see how black it is there? If that was just black, you wouldn't, uh, you would get no contrast. It would look very jumbled. So a much better way to do it is to just get out here and, and glaze it. By the way, that glaze is dry. Good, you know, it's, it's pretty quick. Now we'll finish this area up with really some shadows. This is the shadow side. Of course, our light's coming across like this today, so this is not really catching a whole lot of light, but we can't just leave it. I am gonna put some highlight on the left side of the right branches, because these are all the right branches, but we'll put it on, a little bit on the left side. So hopefully what that's gonna do is still give us some of that depth. I mean, you can't just leave it dark. This isn't a night scene after all, it's very bright, and the sun's fairly high in the sky, I think. Cool. That, that seems about right. I'm just kind of going with, going with how it seems. <laughs> cool. All right. So that's kind of our dark, you know, our dark color. And then we'll get our, get our light tone. All these greens have dried on my palette. I haven't been doing a very good job misting. So <laughs> that's okay. There. And maybe just, well, that's kind of similar to the background. Okay. That looks a little better. Maybe just every once in a while, bring out a few we can play around with the colors but bring out a few of these little highlights this one here is the most important because it overlaps and creates a creates a layer all right well i think we're done i had a lot of fun i hope you did too don't forget to check out our website dvds and brush line thanks for watching